Right, welcome to uh, aerosol science in the bathroom, summarized in a bedroom. So uh, you might have seen some of my other videos uh, documenting this process. So this is really just a summary video. If you're interested more about the apparatus, the, the very specific results of the test, how I did the test, just keep watching. I'll have that uh, basically a background of the apparatus and then each mask and how I tested, I have some good data. You can see the graphs. You can see how the data changes with time. Um, if you're someone who's a, a skilled in the art of aerosol and you have some feedback, I would love to hear it. Um, also check a link to my in the link below to the other previous video where I gave more detail about how this test compares to an N95 fit check versus other things. Um, and so let's just jump into the details. So here's the quick summary. So I'm going to toss it up on this side. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll put the summary data up here. Um, so let's jump into you know what's new on this test. So. Uh, the Air Queen was one that we we added to this test. So the Air Queen, uh, which I purchased on my all, and, and I should say that all of these filters were purchased by myself. No one was paid. Um, they were purchased from what I consider the most reputable source. And I always try to buy from a website that will be around for a while. I don't want to buy stuff on eBay because eBay or Amazon, those brands can change all the time. And then you don't know if you get the same thing twice. So this was bought from the Air Queen USA website uh, and shipped directly to me. Um, so here, the, the test results for the Air Queen are, um, we had a filtration efficiency uh, and I tested two masks because the first one I, this, and this is the one, it got pleated a little bit when I put the probe in. Uh, so I tested two masks and I tested them a total of uh, three times. So I got a range from 89.2 to 90.3. I was kind of surprised because I was expecting these to do much better. Um, uh, pressure drop wise, you know, they're very similar to the other KN90, KF94 masks. So I'm surprised that so many people like this mask because uh, I was expecting to see some significant improvement, but I really didn't. The filtration efficiency is not really is worse. Uh, the pressure drop is not much better. I, it, it's certainly light. I will. I would not, not argue that the weight between this and a, and a botten mask is is slightly noticeable. But on your face, I didn't notice a difference at all. I also don't like it because it's one of the masks that collapse when you breathe in. It's one of the things I don't like about the Dr. Peary, although it has excellent filtration efficiency, is that it collapses your face on a heavy breath. Um, so I was I was surprised to see that, but I wanted to test it. So we tested the Air Queen. Um, uh, we also tested another new mask that I had. This is the Mima, uh, another uh, KF rated as KF94. Um, mask, I'm, I'm surprised by that. I'm not sure how that rating system really works. I'm guessing there's the, the, that stating KF94 is very different than applying to a specific Korean spec. So I'm a little curious at how that works out. Uh, this mask is unique because it has these ear loops on the side that are made from like a fabric material. Uh, it's like a, they're, they're flat. They're like cut out from like a fabric material. And so the fit, I mean, they're very comfortable, very comfortable. I'll definitely say that. Pressure drop wise, very similar. Uh, filtration, so we'll put the data up here. <laughs> I'm getting, I'll get, I'll get better as we go along. Put the data up here, but for the MEMA, the pressure drop was 88 point, or sorry, excuse me, the filtration efficiency was 88.2% and a pressure drop of 0.28. Now, um, that, that, that filtration efficiency is gonna vary a lot because this mask does not have a good face seal. So you can easily open it up. It's, I feel it moving around in my face all the time. I can't get a good seal around my face. So if you're after maximum uh, protection, I would not recommend this. It really doesn't provide any uh, really benefit. Uh, so similar, low filtration efficiency, not a great pressure drop and not a good face seal. Very comfortable though. So there is that to be said. Uh, we also tested a couple other things uh, beyond the ones that I'll go to the end, which are what I'm going to recommend. Um, we did test a, a cloth face covering. This is a, B, a cool brand, um, a cool brand cl cloth face covering. I'm not going to use the word mask because it's really not a mask. Uh, I was actually shocked by this. So this mask, uh, just a standard face covering. I punched the port in here. I feel like it's a neoprene material, two layers. Uh, pressure drop wise and filtration efficiency. So let's talk about, so, so the filtration efficiency actually shocked me, 52.6%. So we have a polydispersed aerosol based on the literature for the TSI 8026 uh, aerosol, gen or aerosol generator that I used and I used sodium chloride. Uh, I did, this time I did uh, two grams in 50 grams of liquid. So roughly 4% um, salt concentration. We'd expect to see around a 50 nanometer count median diameter. Uh, it's polydispersed though, so there's gonna be stuff that's smaller than that, 10 nanometers, there's gonna be stuff much bigger than that, up to a micron probably. Um, I, I do need some more instrumentation to really get that size distribution. I'm working on trying to get some. So, but what this tells us is that it shockingly gave protection about 52.6% for this particular material, this mass. So it's going to vary with different cloth masks. So don't just say that, oh, all cloth masks are like this. No, but this particular one. And it kind of shocked me. That's actually pretty good for what it, it did. But then in the reality, the pressure drop was about uh, 0.2 inches of water using my kind of breathing test, which you can watch in the review. Uh, 
So, uh, you know, if you're going to have that much pressure drop, I would much rather have the, the protection as well. But I was surprised by that. Uh, but this is one of the most important things. And this is why I actually started this video. So I had purchased a KN95 mask. Um, and or actually, sorry, excuse me, let me clarify. I did not purchase I had a friend that purchased this and he had asked me to test this because he was curious of what, how these worked. I, I have more, I'm gonna acquire, hopefully have more details about where exactly I got it from. But um, right away, I noticed something very unique about it. And it's hard to tell on video, but it's soft, almost like a pillow. And it breathes really easy. I thought one of two things, either this is the best mask that's, that no one ever knows about or it's fake, it's not real. And the answer is it's not real. So I'll, polish, I'll stick up the data uh, over here. Uh, so we have the, uh, the random KN95 uh, filtration efficiency at 67.4%. So not much better than this cloth mask uh, is, is the filtration efficiency. And the pressure drop though, is that's what's, that was what's really surprising. So the pressure drop for this ma mask was about 0.15 inches of water, which is about half of what we're seeing for other masks. So it breathes very nice, um, but it doesn't really offer you any protection. So would I recommend paying $3 or $4 for one of these? Absolutely not. And this is the most important thing. Do not buy these from eBay sellers or Amazon sellers because you don't know if it's real. And some people are saying that there's some suppliers of K95s out there. I haven't purchased them myself. I think one is called Bonafide or something like that. If they don't provide test data, if they're not providing you other information about this, I would not trust them. I would not use them in any setting in which you actually might be exposed to COVID-19. So do not buy random KN95. That's why I started this whole project to look at Korean masks because I thought they might be better. And so far the data that I've seen and the tests that I've done, I think they are. Um, we also tested the Moldex N100 mask. I don't have it with me right now, uh, but basically this is kind of our control mask because I always want to test how effective is my system. Is it good at resolving a wide range of filtration efficiency? The Moldex N100, uh, so the filtration efficiency, 99.9%. Okay, that's what we'd expect out of an N100 mask. But what's the trade-off? Well, we got a pressure drop of about a half of an inch of water. And so what we're seeing here is uh, the trade-off between filtration efficiency and pressure drop. And so if you get really high in 100 mass, you're that's the trade-off you make. And you can, uh, between brands, there's also variation, but we're gonna cover that. So what is my recommendation still? So of all the masks I've met, tested, this Botten, TIA Botten, KF94 from Korea, is so far the best mask. And I, and I think the one criteria that's the most important is does the mask collapse? So I'll put the summary data back up here. So you'll see that for most masks, they collapse. And what I mean by that is that they fall into your face when you breathe in heavily and their lips touch the mask. For the for the Dr. Peary, which is also a pretty good mask, uh, I didn't bring one up with me for the review, but uh, is a pretty good mask and you can see my previous review or just skip ahead into the YouTube video, you'll see each of the masks that I have. It's a good mask too. It has good filtration efficiency, good pressure drop, but the fact that it collapses in my mouth is annoying to me and that drives me nuts. The the Botten mask, which is by far the best that I found so far and, and reasonably priced, I uh, a link to the place that I bought it. Well, I am not sponsored by them. I bought these myself. I'm just simply providing the information of where I got it from. Um, they had a sale. You could buy a hundred of them for, uh, if you're a new customer, it was 10% off. So that would be a uh, $1.90 a mask or $1.80 a mask dollar. And if you were a returning customer, you got 20% off. So $1.60 a mask if you bought a hundred. That's a very reasonable price for these. Um, and so what, what's nice about this when I talk about collapse is if I breathe in heavily, <sighs> It doesn't come to my face. It stays out. And this stiff outer lining makes that awesome. So I don't have this, and there's a port on this, so it's not a perfect example of the test, but um, it, it's really nice. And because it doesn't touch your lips, I feel much more comfortable talking in it. When the masks are rubbing against your mouth all the time, it just, it's irritating to me. I feel like people, it's a tendency people have to pull down their mask, which don't do that. When you're talking to someone, keep your mask up. Just talk louder. Um, so that, that's it. And, and I can show you an example. Um, I'm going to use the Air Queen as that example. And, it, and so let's put the Air Queen on. Uh, and even though this has a, a port in the front, you can see it, it sucks to my face and my lips are touching the mask. So, I mean, it depends on your face shape and face size about how much this is going to impact you. For my face shape and my particular uh, chin and all that stuff, is that it does contact my lips. And, and so you can maybe even hear it in my voice when I'm talking, it's hard for me to say if you can, but I can feel my lips touching it and that drives me nuts. Um, so thanks for uh, taking a look. This video is long. I'll just piece together all the tests that I have. You'll see the real time results. Um, if you are interested more about the apparatus and a long discussion about that, I include my previous video, which was not as well edited. Hopefully I'll get better with each video. What's coming up next? I got more maps coming. So I bought the, uh, 
uh, La Hot Air, Hot Air, I'm not sure, it's another Korean face mask. I also wanted to try the Soom Labs, S-O-O-M Labs. It is also part of this nano material or uh, nano pore material. Um, and so hopefully that mask, uh, we'll see how it compares to the Air Queen. Um, I'm not sure the advantage of that nano pore material. I mean, I think the idea is that we use electret media or electrostatic material. Electrostatic material can lose its electrostatic properties when exposed to oily droplets or some liquids like isopropyl alcohol and stuff like that. That'll just basically kill the, the electrostatic properties of that. However, for most people that are wearing a mask that's electrostatic, that really, like the bottoms I'm sure are electrostatic material, it doesn't really matter that unless you're exposed to oily aerosols. So if you're just like in a shop, if you're at work, that's not a manufacturing facility where they're, or, or at a cook, you're not really going to be exposed to that much. If you were a waitress and you're going in and out of the kitchen, maybe some more. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, if you have a, a job in which you're not exposed to oily aerosols, so just regular particles in a, in a grocery store or in an office setting or, uh, you know, outdoors, it, the electric material, excuse me, the electrostatic material will continue to hold that charge very well. So I'm not really sure the advantage there is some discussion about that material being washable. And I think that that maybe is the valid argument, which is that you can reduce the number of masks you need to give to everyone in the country if you had a washable and reusable N95. So I think that's a valid point. But what I'm seeing right now is the Air Queen, it doesn't really provide a benefit. I'd much rather push the button. It's cheaper. And I think it has a lot of advantages. So that's where I'm at right now. But hang in for two more weeks. I got more coming. Zoom Labs, La Hot Air, uh, some other ones. We'll see how they stack up. Uh, someone also asked if I'll be doing any kid masks. I don't think so, just because I can't, uh, it'd be very difficult to have a child do what I need them to do in terms of the breathing and all the stuff that I show in the video. So uh, I won't be able to do that. But uh, uh, let's see. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe because I don't wanna be a YouTube star. This is really just about getting information out there. So send this to friends, send this to people that are curious about masks. My objective with all of this is just to provide information to people about what masks are effective, what can protect them. I worry that this fall uh, with COVID-19 might be very, very bad uh, as people move back indoors. And I'm trying to get the word out there about what are masks that we can use that don't take them from healthcare workers. So don't buy an N95, don't do that because healthcare workers need those. Don't buy N100 valve masks. They don't protect other people. They protect you, but then the valve is opened up. So you need masks that, are, that aren't that are stealing from people and that also provide protection to people. And I think that's where the KF94 is sitting in that sweet spot. I trust the quality so far. Um, and so if other people have other masks they want to attack, please message me. Uh, you can also find me on Reddit. I'm in the, uh, there's a mask for all subreddit. Uh, check in there. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you. You don't need to subscribe. Just share this with people that you know. Uh, start to prepare for the fall. And uh, hopefully we can go from there. So thanks for watching. And uh, I'll cut over to now to a uh, long duration of mass tests if you want the details. Thanks. Welcome to aerosol science in the bathroom. We're going to be testing some more KNF 94 filters today. We have a slightly improved setup, which I'll walk through. Um, one of the big things is I hooked up a Python program so that we can now get a live plot of the data as well as the five and ten second con or five and twenty second concentration average. That should help a lot. I also went ahead and added a small uh, orifice in the line here. This should help the pressure reduce the pressure fluctuations that we were seeing as part of that. We have some new test equipment that we'll be using today. We have a magnet helix gauge. This is a zero to two inch pressure gauge. As part of this test, I'm gonna add two criteria. I'm gonna look at the pressure test during a simulated breathing. I'll do my best to try to maintain it consistently across all masks, although that is not perfectly ideal. Ideally, you're doing it at this a filter media level. But for these tests, we'll just do it at a, at a mass level to give an indication of relative difference. Um, so if they're really close together, they may not be different. If we see a huge difference, uh, then, we'll, then we'll know that that is in fact different. Um, and the other addition that we'll be adding uh, to that is we'll be doing some zero checks before we get started. So before we start on anything, we are going to hook up a small HEPA capsule filter to our system to make sure that we actually get zero counts. That's going to verify how low can this counter actually detect. So when we were detecting with last night in the last video, which I'll send a show a link below, that we detected that the uh, N100 filter had 99.6% filtration efficiency or 99.7. Uh, was that limited by the counter itself? So we'll do that test quickly. All right, so right now our concentration is about 3,000 particles per cc. We have not turned on the generator yet, so this will be our background concentration. We're going to hook up the HEPA filter. Uh, I'm going to hook up the HEPA, and we're going to watch that concentration really plummet down there. So now we're seeing a five-second average concentration of about zero. 
So the 20 second will maintain a little high because that's a 20 second average. The five second average is now zero. If we look at the device itself, no more de particles detected. So we do know we have a leak tight system in the entire pneumatic system, including that addition of the new orifice. So we'll get started here by turning on our aerosol generator and we'll let this stabilize to about 20,000 particles per cc and then we'll start our mass test. All right, in today's test, we are gonna be doing a few different filters. I have the MEMA KF94. This is a little different, it has those kind of different ear straps on it. Um, again, these are all um, attached with test fittings. And again, we use the electronics grade um, RTV on the backside to share a good seal. Then it sat for 24 hours before we started this. So we'll be testing the, the MEMA KF94. I have an Air Queen. These are highly, a lot of people said that they really like these, um, that they breathe really easy. Um, these are not a KNF94 certified or rated mask. Um, so we'll test them and see how they do uh, relative to this. We have our uh, Dr. Peary mask that I tested last time. This is the KF94 I was wearing for a few hours as well. And we'll test again the Botten KF94 mask. As our control, we'll use the Moldex N100 just to verify that we are seeing a difference. I do have a couple other ones that are going to be kind of fun. This is a random KN95 mask that was given to me uh, by someone to see how it performed. I could tell right away that something seemed off on it. It breathed very easy. I think we're going to see, is it real or not? I also have a cloth mask. Uh, we're gonna test that what kind of filtration efficiency and pressure drop do you get with a cloth mask. Now, full disclosure, I wanna make this very clear. Cloth masks like this are very effective at source control. Please always aware at minimum a cloth mask. They protect other people, not yourself, but that is very important. So we'll test this today. We'll show that they probably don't filter grade, but just because they don't filter in very well in inhalation conditions, they are effective in exhalation and capturing droplets coming out of mouth. So I want to be very clear. All right, so we'll get started with the first test will be the Air Queen. I purchased this at airqueen.com, their direct US website, and shipped directly to me. Um, so a couple things about it, it's kind of like a standard, like some people call these a fish style because they're kind of like, look like a little bit of a fish shape, you know, this oval shape. And uh, in terms of fit, uh, I did have to shorten the ear loops a little bit. I kind of always, I seem to have shorter ears, narrower ears than everyone. So um, installation is pretty good. Um, fits good, good nose bridge. Uh, feels good in terms of fit. So we'll do some uh, filtration efficiency tests and see how it stacks up. Here, so the concentration you can see is very little bit. Um, this period of time I had, I was just testing the mask. Uh, I was opening the door, so I've let it stabilize here. I use a small fan now to get a more uniform concentration in the room, so it's not varying so much. So our last 20 seconds have been 1.67 times 10 to the fourth. So we'll use that, 1.67 times 10 to the fourth. Yeah, I use like a slightly different tubing than I did last time. And that's just because uh, it's a little more flexible, so it's not pulling on the mask. And let's take a look how the concentration's doing. So definitely a drop. I'm gonna restart my program. Uh, this lets me get just the latest with the, with the mask installed. So what I'm going to do this time is, uh, one additional note too is that I'm still getting a little bit of fluctuation in the in the airflow, but if I kind of breathe more uniformly, it seems like it stabilizes much quicker. So there is going to be a little bit of concentration variation associated with uh, a small fluctuation, but the addition of the orifice seems to help helped a lot with that. So I should get much more uniform data. All right, so let's take a look at how the data looks. You're seeing one consistent trend which is that every time I breathe in, it's spiking. So that can mean that I have a face seal issue or that the media is not that great. I'm not sure which one it is. So I'm just gonna read uh, regular for the next 20 seconds and we'll use that as our baseline for the on mask. All right, so we're getting a little bit of variation. I'm gonna call it about 1.74 times, 1,740 particles. So uh, the, with the, this is the Air Queen number one, uh, we had 1,740 particles, roughly concentration uh, particles per cc uh, with the mask on. I did the average of the upstream before and after mask removal, so I, the concentration had changed, so I did the average of that. That works out to be is about 10.8% uh, or 0 0.108 in decimal form. So this has a filtration efficiency of 89.2. Again, these numbers are a little variable. 
So I wouldn't put like, it's not exactly 89.2 plus or minus a few percent, but uh, we'll compare these relative to all the other tests. The second air queen, this one, the puncture is much more uniform. So I just want to make sure that it wasn't a pleading issue. So we'll test this one too. We'll have two samples for this one to see how it compares. I think a lot of people like this mask. So the more data I have to show that if it's how it compares, I think it's better. So let's install it and let's run it through the paces. Installed. Uh, the, uh, the concentration, I'm going to put it up near my face, so this is the ambient concentration. We're going to let it stabilize for 20 seconds and we'll record that value. So right now we're at about, uh, so the concentration is dropping in the room because I turned off the generator, but we can, uh, we can adjust for that again. So, all right, so 20 second average, we are almost there. And we are going to call it at 1.32 times 10 to the 4. Now let's, uh, let's watch this concentration here. So this, uh, this mask has no pleating in it. But again, it is not filtering much better than the other one. So we'll close this and we'll start it again to do just the uh, mask on performance measurement. So here we go. I'm just going to do consistent breathing. Not trying to breathe too hard or too fast. The kind of breathing that I would do when I'm sitting at a desk. So I'm going to take the 20 second concentration average is about 1.632. Uh, I've removed the uh, tubing and the finished concentration after 20 seconds is 1.258. Just had some scribble there, but uh, so the, this is the number 21. Uh, so we had a in mass concentration 1,632. Started the test 1.32 times 10 to the fourth. End of the test 1.258 times 10 to the fourth. We'll take the average of that. So we end up with 12.6%. Uh, uh, penetration or effective mass filtration of 87.3 uh, so for the air queens for the next test i have a magni helix pressure gauge and i've attached it to the pressure port again i have this air queen tight against the face now it's hard to show exactly how much lung volume i'm using at a time so i'm going to use my hand to simulate where i'm at the empty lung so breathe all the way out and where i stop breathing and we'll track that pressure on the magnahela gauge to try to simulate where what is the pressure in a typical breathing. So if I breathe really fast. So I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna do what I would normally breathe. I'll try to be consistent as I can. This is not a perfect test because it's really dependent on my lungs. So if I breathe really hard, I can make it look really high. So I'm gonna do my best to just do a gentle average breath. And I'll, show, I'll use my hand motion to simulate how that breath is looking so that people can get a relative comparison. So here we go. This is just gonna be like a normal breath. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do one second breathe-in timing. I guess I'm reading this backwards, so I'll have to look at the data afterwards, uh, but I'll put it up there with, with the average. You can watch the video here. So I'm getting close to about a half inch of water, somewhere around there. So that's the pressure test. This is going to be the Dr. Puri mass. This is the same one I tested in my last video with the off-center port. Uh, same lot number, so we'll just test it to compare how does it compare to the air queen with our test conditions to make sure that there's not a variation in the aerosol, uh, as well as do the pressure test to see how it stacks up. So let's check out the uh, Dr. Puri and see how it does. Okay, so this is the Dr. Peary um, upstream concentration, outside mass check. So we've, I, I ran the generator. You can see that it kind of uh, came to a peak. It's starting to settle out. So we'll take the last 20 seconds. So we're getting uh, 2.616 times 10 to the four. Uh, downstream check, we'll restart the program and we'll uh, track it here. Again, you can see my breath. Every breath is having some effect. Get a couple of breaths in and then we'll take the average. Uh, 
Okay, so we'll take the average there. So our 684 particles per cc. 20 second average at the end of the test to be 2.08 times 10 to the 4. Dr. Peary mask, we had an out, uh, outside concentration at the start of 2.616. Inside the mask, sorry for the poor handwriting, 684. The outside check at the end, 2.09 times 10 to the 4. So this is just the equation here. So we're going to do 684 divided by uh, 2.616 times 10 to the We're basically doing the average of the upstream to try to level out for that. Uh, so we ended up with 2.9% uh, uh, penetration or an effective mass filtration of 97.1, which is similar to what we got last time. So I think in KF94, this so far is my favorite mask and I'll explain why. It has a stiff outer layer and that prevents the max collapse. Um, the other thing is it has adjustable ear loops, which I kind of like because it's nice to be able to uh, adjust that. So, so far it's my favorite one. We'll see how it stacks up in this test today to compare to everyone else to make sure that we're doing a nice consistent test. So we'll We'll keep using the same mask, we'll test them every time and see how consistent my data is. All right, so we'll install the mask and I'll be using the double ear loop. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do an upstream concentration check, install a mask and downstream concentration check. Just, I fired up the aerosol generator for a little bit there to get a little higher concentration. We'll let it stabilize here for just a couple seconds. And so we're gonna call it there at 3.06 uh, times 10 to the fourth. Let's uh, take a look and you can see Right away, the concentration goes way down. That's how you know a mask is effective, but let's see how far it goes down. So let me uh, close it and we'll reopen it to get a better view of the mask value here. Okay, I'm gonna do my best just to do kind of uniform breaths in and out. You're probably gonna see this concentration fluctuate a little bit. And that comes from me breathing in and out. When you suck that air in, the filtration efficiency depends on the face velocity or how fast the air is moving through it. So every breath in and out is getting, and then when you breathe out, your lungs collect a lot of material. So that deposits in my lungs. So my lungs filter as well. So these spikes coming up are when I breathe in. All right, well, we'll get the, we are at uh, 2.25 times 10 to the fourth. Well, the results for the bot in KF94. Uh, this was a first, first test I did. I, I started, I realized, you know, the concentration really wasn't as high as I wanted it to be. So I started again, so I repeated that test. Um, so for the last test, I got uh, upstream of 3.06 times 10 to the 4. It did drop to 2.25, and that's just going to happen within a room like this because we have airflow moving through it. So that's why I wanted to start doing up and out. It's going to give us a little bit more accurate results. So for this one, uh, double loop on the ear, 98.9. I mean, I think these are plus or minus a few percent, so that's kind of very similar to the Dr. Peary. If I did a single ear loop, you might get more leakage, and you'll see what that number is. But again, I'm just I'm just trying to compare that to the last test that I did. This is very similar but has some improvement, so I think the last test is comparable. So like 97, 98% for the, for the bot in KF94. Okay, so again, we'll do the pressure drop test. Again, it's not a perfect measurement. I'll be doing one second to one full, full under capacity. I have double ear loop on for the buttons. Uh, just so we maximize the amount of flow having to come through the media, that should give us the highest pressure drop. So go ahead and we'll start here. Okay, so we'll get it hopefully off that. One thing I do like about this mask is it does not collapse against the face up. It does not collapse. It never touches my mouth. I really like that feature. That's so far my favorite thing. So, so far my favorite mask, but let's keep going and see how other masks do. All right, so the next mask that we're gonna be testing is the uh, Mima KF94. This is a little different. This has some different eyes or uh, ear features. These are like a flexible fabric or like not like a flat, flat cut fabric. Um, I think my first big concern about this mask right away is uh, face fit. So it easily, I can, you know, there's not much it pulling on here. Um, and I don't, and there's no way for me to tighten these ears. I will say the one thing that is nice about the ears is they're really comfortable by using that fabric. So really comfortable, but I'm not sure about this face seal. So let's find out how it does. So the Mima mask upstream concentration. We'll let it stabilize for a second. We're looking at 2.517 times 10 to the 4. The Mima mask installed right away. This tubing is really pulling against my face. It's got a very poor seal. That's really evident in the data here, where you can see it spiking really high, and that's just because the face seal breaks open. So right away, I'm not gonna recommend this mask just because you can't get a good face seal. 
if you're really looking for high levels of performance. But let's uh, let's see how we do if I kind of hold it. So I'm going to close this so we can get a nice consistent reading. Okay. All right, so here we go with the Mima. Right away, yeah, it's uh, not great. Unfortunately, I, I don't have the axes of this going to zero, so this is actually a minimum of about 2,000 particles per cc. I should adjust the axes program, but I'm not a pro at, uh, at Python yet, so let's just let it run here for a little bit. So I'm doing my best to try to keep it sealed against my face. I'm gonna stop talking and just breathe. All right, so we're gonna get an average of about 2,800. It's really hard. Every time I move my face, it's just leaking a lot. So 2,800 is what we'll use. The MEMA mask, we had uh, upstream concentration at the start of the test of 2.517 times 10 to the fourth. Inside the mask, it's a lot of variability because we have a poor face seal. So I took an average, uh, the 10 20 second average was about 2,800. And then the out uh, concentration at the end of the test was 2.218. So we'll take the average of these two to compute this. To get that, I get 11.8% um, penetration or an effective filtration efficiency of 89.2, or sorry, 88.2 uh, for the MEMA mask. Okay, so we'll do the pressure drop measurement on the MEMA mask. Again, we'll use the magnahelic gauge here, uh, and we'll do it with kind of one second to lung full from an empty lung. Again, we'll try our best to make this consistent. Okay, so it's kind of, you know, sort of just over a quarter inch of water there. I'll check the data we'll, with the video at the end. We'll check to get the data. I already do not like this mask. It easily opens up on the bottom of the face, letting air in. So you don't want that. Uh, Comfortable-wise, it's fine. Um, is it better than a cloth mask? Let's find out. Uh, but in general, I'm not a fan. Also, a co it collapses to the collapses to the mouth when you breathe in hard. So, you know, right away, you can see, like... It just collapses to your face. I hate that, don't like that. So uh, in general, I don't think this is a great mask, but let's compare it to some others. So a Chinese made Nats, or ideally Chinese made. Um, I don't have a packaging for this. This is given by a coworker who's interested in how well they wear. Right away when I touched it, I said, I bet you 10 bucks this thing's fake. It feels soft like a pillow. And I'm guessing there's just some melt blown polyester or melt blown material in there. That's not really filtration media. It's just like what you would put in a pillow, basically. Uh, it breathes really easy very low pressure drop. So to me, this is the first sign that this is probably not real, but let's find out how, uh, how well it filters. Generator again, um, we'll let it run. I don't think this is gonna be really critical for this mask, it's gonna perform pretty poorly, so. Um, all right, so let's call it at 2.388 times 10 to the four. But how well does it filter? Uh, well, not great. <laughs> so uh, it's only about 30% efficient, or maybe, uh, maybe 50%, let's see. Let's close it. Let's start it again so we get a nice uh, plot of it on my mouth. Oh yeah, that's not good. Well, the nice thing is that you don't see a lot of variation with breath. And that's mostly because it's not actually filtering anything. So this is why you don't buy random KF, KN95s on the internet because they're just, there's no quality control in these. There's just, there's no way to know if it's real. Unless you have a vendor that is really testing the stuff you just can't, you can't trust it. So if you don't see independent test data, you don't see anything. I mean, the Korean stuff, I was worried about the same thing, but so far all the Korean masks have performed really well. I mean, even the Air Queen, which is so far the lowest, but 
I mean, still way about 20 second off concentration. Notice that the on concentration and the off concentration, this craft does not go to zero, are not that much different. Uh, I think it's around 50% filtration or somewhere around there, 50, 60%. Uh, yeah, this is, I mean, is it better than nothing? Yes. Would I pay a few dollars for it? Absolutely not. All right, so we'll call it there. So 2.108 times 10 to the fourth. Let's start with a 2.38 times 10 to the fourth. In mass, 733 average, or 7,333 average. And at the end of the test, we measured again at 2.108 times 10 to the fourth. So we'll take the average of those concentrations to compute the filtration efficiency. Penetra uh, the, the penetration was 32.6%, or an effective mass filtration of 67.4%. This is a reminder, don't buy random KN95s that you find on the internet. This is so consistent with what I've seen other places. I was happy to test it for him so that he knows these don't work or are not really that effective, uh, but they're way nowhere near close to their affected rating. Or nowhere near, nowhere, they measure nowhere near their effective rating of an N95. So uh, don't buy random Amazon or eBay KN95s. In fact, notice how low the pressure drop is. I mean, that's probably the most amazing thing is I noticed right away, I was like, man, this thing breathes really easy. If this is real, this is an amazing mask. And I was like, it breathes too easy. It's probably not real. Otherwise, we'd all be wearing masks that breathe this easy. So we'll do the same test. One second, breathe in, breathe out. Here we go. We'll start low. I mean, it's pretty, that's a very low pressure drop. So it's like a fraction of an inch of water. I'll do a heavy breath to show you. Those. I'll drill really fast to see how high I can get it. No class to the face, only half an inch of water at maximum breath. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, it doesn't filter anything either, so I guess what's the point of wearing it? Um, these you can purchase at Costco. I just want to use it as a comparison of like, how does that KN95 compare to this mask? So if, you had, if you're in a situation where you have no good options, what do we got to do? So I don't recommend this uh, to, for protection. Absolutely, we're always wear a cloth mask at minimum. Uh, those protect other people. These are very effective at capturing the large droplets, even the aerosols that are coming out of your mouth because they have yet to evaporate. So they're much bigger than what we talk about uh, droplets when they're um, evaporated in the air. We call them droplet nuclei. Uh, so these capture them while they're still wet and big. So they're actually pretty good at that. Not perfect. I think still uh, some of these masks are going to be much more effective at that. That's just my personal opinion. That has not been I tested to support that, but I think that's likely the case. So let's test it and find out how well it does. Uh, upstream concentration, so I, brought, I fired on the generator. I'm going to try to keep always at 25,000. So upstream concentration is 2.544 times 10 to the 4. Uh, it doesn't do much. It definitely does not do much. So let's close it out. You can see the drop. I mean, when we're looking at the other mass, it's going to zero. I mean, this is it's barely doing anything. So let's, uh, let's close it, and uh, we'll open another one. Uh, I think I can do it this way. Yeah, there we go. And let's kind of monitor our concentration. I'll do the same thing. I'll try to do consistent slow breaths just to not spike the concentration. But uh, yeah, you're not filtering much here. I'm even surprised it's even that high. I mean, I can feel so much leaking past my nose. Again, you can see my breath, so there is actually some filtration that actually happens. That's kind of shocking to me that it even filters that much. Okay, so... Uh, we'll take, take the 20 second average and call it good. So we got 1.125 times 10 to the 4. So we're going to let it stabilize here for a few seconds. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, the cloth mask even gives you that much filtration. Um, so I'm actually kind of impressed. Um, I think a lot of people talk about cloth face masks as being pretty much useless. I mean, they're definitely good on the source appointment or source uh, arrestment. So preventing you, but they're not... A, you know, they're better than nothing. This, this, this mask certainly shows that it's better than nothing. Uh, so 2.204 on the way out. Face covering. Um, so we have an out, uh, upstream, the outside mass concentration at the start at 2.544. The in mass concentration fluctuating a lot, but we took the 20 second average, 1.125 times 10 to the fourth. And then the finished test, 2.204 times 10 to the fourth. 
That gives us an effective penetration of 47.3%, or a filtration efficiency for this mask of 52.6. I'm actually surprised it's that high. I would have thought it to be much low. I mean, granted, the aerosol we're using is polydisperse. Um, I'm just using a salt generator with 2% salt. Um, or, sorry, not 2%. Uh, I have to look at the beginning of the video. Two of the two two grams in fifty milliliters, so that's four uh, percent. Um, so it's like fifty nanometer count mean count median diameter. So I'm surprised it's even this good. But to me, this highlights a very important thing: is that and I have to go to the camera while I talk to you. Is that even though a cloth mask is way way less than an N95, a KN90, KN, KF94, etc., they're still fairly effective. Especially if you imagine that you have good uh, good filtration coming out, so you're capturing all those particles, and you get a 50% reduction on the way in, maybe even better, because the bigger the particle, the probably the better these masks work. I'm not, uh, you know, it's not bad. Uh, would I pick this over that fake KN90, KN95? I don't know. I mean, I, they're not much different, so uh, we'll see what the rest of the mask tests like. So we'll see how it compares. So get no protection, but does it breathe easier? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's find out. So we'll do the one second. The lung full again, the quantitative measurement, not a great qualitative measurement, but it's a nice way to show how easy it is for me to breathe. It feels like it's just as hard as the other mask. So let's see if I'm right. Here we go. About a quarter inch of water. Okay, so the next test, uh, so this is a little bit about a quarter inch of water, I'll say that's estimated. Um, does it collapse? Absolutely. That sucks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, again, this is highlights why I think KF94 are great. I mean, these masks, and even a well-functioning K95, you're getting the same pressure drop, everything's the same, you pay a couple bucks more, but you actually get protection. So, uh, let's test our last mess. Last test of the day is going to be the N100. Uh, we got a 20-second average concentration of 1.672 times 10 to the 4th. Yeah is look at that plummet of concentration, right? That, that's why these masks are effective. I mean, this is going below zero. It's got to be close to zero. All right, we'll close this and we will start again. Let it close out the, uh, there we go. Now this might have some face leaks too, so we'll just, uh, we'll do the same thing. Try to reunite them steady. Uh, this is amazing. It's nearly zero. Uh, our 20 second concentration average is plummeting. When I talk, it leaks a little bit because my mouth moves, but let's just let it stabilize here. So it's about 10.5. So let's call it there. Uh, 10, let's say, all right, 12.2. We're going to call it there. 12.2. Oh, no, 13. Dang it. Let's see if it stabilizes. All right, 14. We're going to call it there. It's stabilized. 14 particles per cc. Hey, this is why an N100 mask is so effective. This is why a healthcare professional, or anyone who's doing anything that's extremely dangerous, where they need good respiration, um, they should wear a really an N100, a P100. This is this is an N100 or a P100. They're both going to be really effective. Okay, so we got about the 20 seconds stabilized, so 1.476 times 10 to the 4. Upstream concentration, again, apologize for the poor handwriting, 1.672 times 10 to the 4th. The in mass concentration incredibly low at 14 particles per cc with an out concentration of 1.476 at the end of the test. This gives an effective penetration of 0.08% or an effective mass filtration of 99.91%. And this is kind of what we would expect with an N100 mask. Um, I, you know, there's some variability in this data. It's not perfect. I wouldn't say that I have accuracy to that level, but it highlights again that this test setup that I'm using is good at capturing. Uh, relative mass performance. So if our N100ers are gold standard, we can compare everything relative to that to see how they work out. This is just a quantitative, we'll do the raising hand one second. You can see right away that it's actually a much higher pressure drop than any of those others. So let's do it, here we go. Let's 
a little off on that one, sorry. All right, so it's about a half an inch of water, so it's quite a bit higher than even those KNF 94s that we're testing. So, uh, one thing I do like about this again, heavy breath, does it collapse? No, this the mold decks are really nice because of that. I, I, that's one of the things I really I hate their face seal. I like the 3M or the or the um, Honeywell face seal, this Soterium face seal, much better. But the mold decks non collapsible face that makes it amazing. You can see that it doesn't collapse even an inch of water. So, uh, good compared to like another relative measurement. Possible leakage past my face, not the issue. See if we can get a little bit better performance there. Yeah, not really. All right, let's close it out and we'll start it again. So I, I'm not convinced that these are are really that great. I mean, you sell the full test. I'm using the same aerosol that I just used on that N100 mask. It had really high efficiency, 99.91. Again, you can see the breath. A thousand is dropping to a thousand between 1800. So. Uh, I don't think these are much more than 90%. And they have a fairly high pressure drop too. So I'm not sure what why people like these so much. Maybe I have a bad batch, I don't know. Okay, air, air queen removed. Uh, we're getting about 1.06 times 10 to the four. I'm testing these multiple times here, and I'm getting roughly the same value, about 90.90% filtration efficiency. So, you know, I think for the pressure drop and for the filtration efficiency, I, I, I mean, they're light. I will definitely not argue that. They're an incredibly lightweight filter um, or a mask. I mean, they feel like they're nothing, but they still have the nose bridge, so you can't like stick them in your pocket maybe the electret media is going to be a little bit or uh using just it looks like they're using a, a fine they call it nano filter so uh, no electret media so you know the one advantage that you might get out of this type of mask i'm sorry there i got a little story is that maybe you can wash it maybe you can reuse them for longer than electret media i'm not really sure otherwise what the benefit of this mask is it's not cheaper at least for the volumes that i was buying i think i bought the five pack it was 17 dollars um i you know i just I, I hear a lot of people raving about them, so I was really interested to try them out, and I don't think the data really supports how well they work. So far, I think the best one between the, the ones that I've tested, I have more coming. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in the summary video, but uh, so far, it's not the best that I've tested. Really tight here. I, I did this on the first test. I'll repeat it the last. Since maybe my methodology might have changed, and I've got a little bit better about how to do the hand thing with my breath, so we'll repeat it here again. Um, and you might notice that the, that the zero is off just a little bit on this magnetic gauge. And that's all, mostly because, well, I can't do what I talk about. It's because if you tilt the gauges, they, they have a little weight inside of them. So it's not, again, this burp test is not perfect. It's just meant to show a relative difference. So here we go. Okay, so it's got a quarter inch of water. Again, one thing I don't like about this mask is it also collapses at heavy breath. I hate that. It, uh, it drives me nuts. So about one inch of water, you get mask collapse. Maybe that's how I should do the future test is just uh, breathe till one inch of water and if it collapses against your face then you're annoyed. But okay, anyways, uh, we'll uh, put a summary together and finish this video.